Hi guys, welcome to another live review. I think this is number eight now. I'm not too sure. Um, I'm live with Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews. Hello. And of course, James at Rampant Line Beer Reviews or Rampant Line Reviews. Oh, guys. Oh, there's many names. <laughs> um, and this was actually James's idea to do this beer. And it, it always helps when it's a German beer from the outside of Germany. And uh, for the most part, quite cheap as well, all things considered. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the beer in question today, as you can tell by the title and all the information down below, is the Rothaus Pils Tannenzirpel. Completely butchered that, I do apologise. And this is a, as you can tell, a Pilsner, clocking in at 5.1% with an IBU count of 32 and is brewed By Bad Winterberg, is that not Bad Wurttemberg? Excuse me. So by the uh, Black Forest, I believe. So I think James has got some info that he can talk to us about the beer and the brewery itself. So I'm more than happy to hand it over to James. All right. Okay. So yeah, I've got. But um, yeah, so this is the brewery Badish Shaft Square Rock House, which is here basically Baden State Brewery from the So today this brewery is located in Raffenhausen, which is about 55 kilometers southeast of Freiburg in the very southwestern corner of Germany. So the Rockhouse Brewery was founded in 1791 as part of the Benedictine Monastery of St. Blythe, which dates back to the year 1681. So the location of this monastery proved to be very good for their business because there was a plentiful supply of water and it was, uh, there was a big forest nearby, so they had lots of food for heating and things like this. But the monastery was also located on an important trade route from Freiburg to Grafenhausen, which, and it was also at the highest point on the route, and apparently this encouraged a lot of people to actually stop at the brewery. Not that Germans need uh, any other reason to stop at a brewery, of course. Um, but the founder of the brewery was head abbot Martin Gerbert II, who was born in 1720 in Horb am Neckar, and then he was ordained in the year 1744. Um, he was apparently a very gifted scientist as well as quite a, a well-known uh, politician and he helped all of his dominions to grow. But apparently he's also credited with having founded the Sparkasse Bank, which is Germany's second oldest savings bank. But he died in 1793, so it only saw a few months of the brewery's activity. But as a result of the secularisation in Germany, this brewery became part of the Grand Duchy of Baden in the year 1806. And then the brewery was known thereafter as the Grand Ducal Badenstadt Rothhaus. Uh, but in 1811, only 20 years after its inception, the brewery had to keep increase its capacity because there was just huge demand for this beer and they also had to do further renovations on the brewery as well between 1842 and 1846 but the brewery was damaged by a fire in 1847 but there was minimal damage because of the employees managed to save a lot of the equipment and they resumed rather quickly but as part of the Baden revolution which was 1848 to 1849 the brewery was occupied by about 120 Prussian troops who, and they had to cater for them. So the unification of Germany happened in 1871 and this saw the opening of new markets to Rote House which resulted in further expansion and uh, also a special railway wagon to transport the beer. A lot of breweries in Germany for some reason like to mention that but they've got their own steam engine, a new kiln and uh, lots of other new machines as well. But their brewery produced the first bottles in Christmas of 1892 and five years later they purchased their first motor cars to transport the beer. So at the beginning of the 20th century, it was quite difficult for the brewery because of a major fire in 1904, and this destroyed a lot of the brewery, and the production didn't resume until the next year, 1905. During the First World War, the brewery suffered because of the lack of materials, and production dipped significantly. They were producing 32,000 hectolitres in 1913, and this reduced to 6,900 hectolitres in 1990, which took them back to production levels of 1862. But as a result of this, the company became a private stock company in order to survive. But the brewery survived the Second World War largely unscathed, although it had to, they had to basically increase their 
production uh, to, for the command to deal with the command of the French occupation forces. And again, this was kind of partly affected by the shortages that affected Germany after the Second World War. But despite their best efforts, it wasn't until 1948 that they could actually brew it once again at full capacity. So in 1956, company director Edwin Led Megale introduced the tannin zeppo, which means little fur cones, and this refers to the sheep and the bottle, of course. And you can see this in the tannin zeppo series of beers today. But this was quite unusual because normally the beer was sold in 0.7 litre bottles in the 1950s, but the beer was still found, uh, still found many fans. So Hans Fender became part of the head brewer of the brewery in uh, 1966, and he grew the brewery successfully during the 70s and 80s with the production exceeding well over 300,000 hectoliters. He was succeeded by Dr. Norbert Nothelfer, who is credited with transforming the brewery into the, the modern practices that it does today. But today the brewery is one of the most modern and well-equipped in Germany, and their brewery that opened in 2000, uh, with their brewery that opened in 2006, and they're also one of the most popular breweries in the country as well. In 2009, saw them introduce their alcohol fry version of the Tannin Zeppelin and several hefebites in beers as well. So yeah, that's pretty much the, the information on the, the brewery. Um, so one of the things that is also worth pointing out with this beer, because this is probably the most famous part of the beer. So the girl that's on the bottle of this one is called Beersheet Craft, and this is a blonde girl in the tra uh, traditional bad dress, of course, and uh, Beersheet Craft is actually a bit of a pun in the local dialect of Germany. It kind of refers to uh, beer gift craft, which means uh, beer gift strength. So yes, yeah, quite an interesting thing, this one, and there you can see the little fur cones, which of course is what tan and zephyr means. So yeah, quite a nice one, that one. Ah, that's all the stuff I have on the, the, uh, the brewery. I think the other beers that they have, they do have a white, which is the orange one, if I remember correctly. Uh, they have the Radler, I forget which colour that is, that might be the silver one. Uh, and they also have a Mertzen beer too, so there's three beers, and you can, three or four beers, and you can find them pretty much all across the whole of Germany. So, yeah, and this one comes in at 5.1% ABV. So, yeah, here we are. And it just, it's, if I'm understanding the German correctly, top of this one it says um, crystal clear uh, brew water from seven wells of 1,000 litres quality malt aroma hops and hallertown make low house being more so it's probably a cool flavour I think that's I think that means yeah, be beautiful, beautiful looking beer. The, the uh, artwork itself reminds me of um, like a playing card with uh, yeah, yeah. the beard. Yeah. And I like the not only the foil at the top, but there's like a, yeah, I've got script, that, yeah. like a design on the top of the foil as well. Uh, you've taken those off already. Good move. <laughs> And this one, my one's kind of, my one's kind of, I'm at it. But the one thing I always love about German is you get like, the state crests and things on it. You always know what they're um, I think that's what I love about Germany is you get a lot of beers that you only get in certain states and things like that. Yeah. And that like, here, here it can be frustrating, but at the same time, it is cool that you know, when you go to a different state, a different town or county or whatever, you can always you know. Yeah, there's there's never a, a dull <laughs> there's never a dull moment when uh, you're in Germany looking for beer. Um, yeah, because there's just there's just so much going on, and uh, yeah, just a beautiful looking label. I, I really really like it, and it definitely stands out. And it's got that sort of um, good say beer. That's got like a, a good iconic feel to it, and you know it's pretty much. Quite an easy beer to get hold of by all accounts. It's a bit of a kind of classic as well. Mm -hmm. One of the sort of German classics, I guess. Although this brewery doesn't, I mean, it's kind of cool how it's like. Mm -hmm. I think you've cut out for me then a little bit, James. 
I was just saying that it's always cool to, um, quite cool that in Germany you can date all the breweries. It's always like that's brilliant. Yeah. 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 Cap's quite nice. Yeah. I like the cap a lot, actually. It's definitely well, one for the collection. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. But I, I, the thing that really got me about this is how young the beer is when you think about it. Mm, it's, it is red compared to some other breweries in yeah. Germany or Belgium. It's like I, must shout, I, must, I must shout out my friend uh, Dan. He, he, he got me two of these at Beers of Europe on Monday. Um, so cheers, Dan. I appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Dan. Cheers, Dan. Yeah. All right. So, not too sure how well you can see that on my lighting at the moment. Um, yeah, I think we've got sort of it's just a, it's just Very, a golden straw, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, strawy kind Crystal of lemony or clear, pale yeah. golden yep. color. Beautiful, beautiful carbonation. The quality is probably not that good. Gentle. But, um, what do you, that glass would probably enhance it a little bit. Yeah, it's probably one of the only style specific glasses that I have, so I'm more than happy yeah. to use it. But it does create a bastard of a head sometimes. But <laughs> most pills, I think you're supposed to, well, some, I know, Herkel, you know, you're actually like, told to have like a big mess of head but yeah textbook pills though in my opinion i have just i always like the little tulip glass he's always just kind of the tulip glass and he always allows you to sip the beer and just um, yeah. get the taste before you sort of take a bigger gulp of it mm -hmm. kind of yeah. i need a new tulip glass i left mm -hmm. all my like good glassware back in the uk and i've got some good ones here but it's like yeah Little things like that really get to it sometimes, but um, trouble is tra traveling with glasses is just yeah, it's always risky, isn't exactly. It? But the thing is, like to buy like branded glassware here in Germany is quite expensive. Yeah, really, it is, it is here as well. It's yeah. just like because I bought I bought a tulip glass from Beermoth. Going completely off topic now. Um, <laughs> bought a tulip glass from Beermoth in Manchester, three pound. I was like, what? It's like you, you pay like eight or nine euros for something like a true lip glass, from what I've seen here. But uh, yeah, anyway, I digress. <laughs> yeah, certainly looks the part. Definitely has that crisp and clean feel to it. Yeah. Oh, let's see if I can get a sniff. Yeah. So quite a sweet malt to this one, I think. Like you can get a lot of sort of biscuity character from it, I think. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to get my biscuit essence. Yeah. Nice lemony, lemon drop kind of. I would say, oh, yeah. not getting too much in terms of aroma, but definitely get that like slightly sweet, biscuity. And it's like yeah. cross between a, a slightly sweetened like shortbread and uh, like a cracker almost. Yeah, it's got. A, I think there's definitely a little bit of readiness to this beer. Right? Oh yeah, I think it's got a little bit of that kind of German white thing. Mm -hmm. I always find that it's it's like German like German pills malts and stuff. They always they always just give you that sort of wheat ready note. Yeah, I'm getting. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting like some slight wheaty notes as well. Yeah, wheat. Yeah, no, but yeah, I get that, maybe what I'm picking up with the sort of white things, yeah. Yeah, and it's that, got that, 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 that classic kind of, um, that, that pilsnery kind of, yeah, you know, just it's just there. Yeah, that like, sort of know. like a graininess. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, so but, that, like say wheat, but, but like a, a Czech pilsner, you get this. I always find that that citrus character comes through. Not mm. like it's not like smack you around the face or anything like that. There's definitely like it's had a tiny bit of lemon squeezed in there. Yeah, you can get. I mean, you, the thing I think that makes the German beers a giveaway to me it's always the the, the, the global hops. You can always tell like Hallertau and Ten Nine Oh yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. can always tell them just because they've got like that little bit like with the hops in this one. You get like a wee bit of emptiness, I think. 
then it's mainly just there's a sort of distinctive thing about the floral, the sort of floral grassy thing that you get. Yeah. Also, mm. sort of like place where like it's just been raining. Yeah. And you go outside and you get that like that like really nice damp s smell in the air. Yeah. But yeah, definitely get that sense of like vegetation. Yeah. But I think yeah, the hops on this one definitely floral, uh, floral lightly grassy, just a wee teeny bit of earth maybe, and then of course you've got that sort of lemon grassy, uh, slightly sharper lemon kind of thing coming out as well. To me, it's mainly a lemon grass. I think that it's mainly. I think this one's mainly sort of floral. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it's, really it's not going to blow you away with the aroma, but it it's yeah. a very pleasant and fresh smell beer. And I'd be interested to do you get like does it smell old your bottle? Because I know Craig, um, it's not Craig's too bad. Little past, it's, but yeah, it's it's a bit past, but it, it, it's still to me the uh -huh. pill before that of um, it's on that kind of level of being within in date so um yeah. Yeah, i don't know about i'm getting the aroma of kind of wet, damp um alexander which is not it's a really kind of fragrant place we get a lot round here it's sort of um it's like a, very close to the cliffs around where i live it's got yeah. that kind of aroma to it along with the, the obvious lemon grassy mm -hmm. wet wet grass thing Mm. Yeah, it smells nice. Yeah, though. it smells really good. I like the, the aroma. It's not going to blow your head off in terms of aroma. So that's what you expect. That's what you want from the cold. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well we we'll jump into this then, guys. Let's yes, see. let's go. First. 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 Cost us. Mm. That is really good. Really refreshing that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. It's got quite a nice malt base to it. It's, it, it's definitely uh, it's nice. Oh, that's really good. Wow. I mean, it's the thing I always think about these beers when it comes to lagers. You know, gin. If Ger you know, Ger Germany has it nailed, this because this is a big production beer. Oh yeah, really yeah. And um, but you know this is this is what they should do. This is if that's what consider shit corn and shit in your beer. Ah, uh, if, if yeah, if I tell you what, if, um, mainstream lagers were like this, there's a fair chance I'd probably still be drinking it. Yeah, if, if you could get the, the quality of this in, like, let's say, a product like Carling or something like that, like, I don't know what yeah. the UK equivalent of this specific beer would be. But if you actually have that, like, quality in there, natural ingredients, nothing added, nothing put in to, like, help maintain the shelf life and that sort of thing, you just get nicer, fresher flavours. Yeah. And you don't get any of like the the aftermath, like the like just because I understand why lagers get the reputation that they do. I used to drink. Well, I think all of us can pretty much say the same. These like macro, like get two crates for like fifteen quid at Morrison's sort of beers, and you know you give this to someone who likes that, and it's not too too far away from what they're drinking it's just a much more pure and drinkable and satisfying experience yeah i mean it depends I mean, if i'm out with a lot i'm quite a few of my friends are not not proper like into like i am but they'll drink it but then they're more kind of lager drinkers and stuff which is fine that's but I, I struggle now to have more than a pint of lager, mainstream kind of lager, when I go out and stuff. I, I, I struggle. I keep having to have to try and find something else. Um, but of course, you still want to be social and stuff and stay with your mates and stuff. But it, it can be difficult sometimes. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I, I know that feeling. Just about to go, and just about to go, because my friends are really kind of down to earth, kind guys, you know. And I was yeah. kind of fine. Yeah. Do I really want another one? Yeah, but you, you can't exactly. Especially, especially when it's yeah, but, well, but when it's four pound a pint as well, so it's kind of yeah. like got. To, I do anyway. I, I feel obliged to. And then for, I think to myself, for an extra quid, I could have a pint of something that's like blows that away. Yeah. So. Yep. But that's just that's just me, of course. No, I'm I'm like that quite a lot of the time. But then it, but again, it's like. There's not many beers that I would outright turn down if they are offered to me. No, no, it's just the gas that kills me. Um, <sighs> yeah, the, yeah, that, just does me. That in. whole forced carbonation stuff is just. Oh, I, I swear that's the reason why I was when I used to drink a lot of it. Sometimes I was a bit ill. It's because it's not the ABV or it's just you know the lager itself. It's it's all the the, the carbonation and stuff. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Just need to get rid of it. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, this is this is nice. flavor-wise. It's one of those beers where there's not too much going on, but what is there? It's just so satisfying. It all just comes in together really nicely. It's beautifully balanced. It's got really nice crispness, nice light body, but it's never watery. That like gentle hot bitterness comes through really nicely. Doesn't linger too long. Doesn't leave it your palate too dry on the back end, but just dry enough that you're like, I want to take another big, big gulp of this beer. Yeah, then it, it'll be pretty much gone, and I don't really want to. Cause it's quite nice. So I don't want to go bang. Yeah. Although you could. Yeah. Um, on a hot day, in say like June, July, or something, in August. Oh yeah, this 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 would be this would be a great barbecue beer just out there and just get a crate of it or whatever and that'd be a yeah. good one to get get people on, uh, as, you know, along with um, your favourite the you know, Hellis. Uh, oh yeah, the eldest. That's just uh, yeah. That's, that's I, just I reckon, my I reckon bit. Load, load of that and, and, and a load of this. You, you, you get people around just by a, a taste of your lager or pilsner. Yeah. Uh, the the thing that, that breaks my heart a lot of the times is when you get like beers like this. When people visit Germany, they like they do get involved in like the, the beer culture. They're like, oh, big, like massive lager, or whatever, and they'll absolutely love it. They'll swig it down. But when they get back to the UK, they just go back to the same stuff, so, which is perfectly I fine. Know. Yeah, yeah it, but I, I, I what, couldn't. I just couldn't. Once, once you drank something like this, you don't have to buy it all the time and stuff like that because you know it can get pricey buying a lot of the, the European lagers in general um, in various parts of Europe. No matter where you are, there's always going to be a really high quality beer that's mass produced in one country, but it's going to cost you sometimes two, three, even four times as much for that mm. same simple beer. I must must have when I was looked at the label. I, I looked at it. And it looks a bit looks a bit kind of Christmassy. I, is, is I mean, is this is this a uh, a year round beer or is it is it a seasonal in the winter time? Or? I think this is just brewed all the time from what right, I can gather. Right, okay. no, just, I, just it, it just had that that kind of look to me about it. I thought, oh, it's yeah, like Christmas beer, you know, especially with that the use of uh, the red and green. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. So I hadn't heard of it before until you, you you mentioned that he was going to be doing that. I thought, oh, that looks different. Um, then I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to get it. And then, as I said, my friend Danny gets it. I'll be going up there. Is there anything you want? I was like, oh yeah, there is actually. <laughs> yeah. And the, the great thing is when you we were talking off air. Like you paid probably potentially just a little bit more than what I paid. Well, Dan, well, Dan, well, Dan, Dan, did. Dan paid. Cheers, good, Dan. Good man. Good um, man, Dan. But yeah, like I think this is like one euro something for a bottle because it, it's not. It is. It's one of those weird things where it's probably just because of where I'm living right now, but I don't really see that too often. 
Um, I see it when I do see it. It's only in like certain supermarkets. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's like it's yeah. there. It's always there, but I have to go a little bit out of my way yeah. for it. I think I think it is more. I think that probably is just the thing because you're in the area. Yeah. 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 Um, sound up, uh, James. Yeah, you cut out then. Uh, just, I was just saying that uh, yeah, this uh, they come out some bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, not not picking that up. Just me. Other than it's just no. I just said Baden Württemberg, and then. All oh, right. Yeah. I, I tell you another thing. I'm picking up on the palate now. Now I'll add sort of probably half of it. It's, it's a lot more kind of. There's a little bit of spiciness going on. A bit of white pepper. Yeah. Just just linger palate. Mm -hmm. It's quite nice. Yeah. It's got something else apart from just a. It's not fizzling out on the palate like a lot of. Yeah. Like you drink it, it and then it's gone. This actually stays around, but doesn't like outstay its welcome. Yeah. No, no, it's just yeah. it's a little bit more. It's giving you a bit extra kind of thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, devastatingly drinkable. I mean, I've got like, not even like oh. a the swig left. Maybe it's. Mm. it's I mean, it's, I've got about two or three, but. I mean, it's, it's basically yeah, it's like a sort of just bit up kind of tells slightly gradyish thing, light like red character, I think. Little bit like as you move further out towards the edge of your tongue, it's like a little bit cereally, cereally and spicy. And yeah, I think that builds like I mean, it's obviously it's it's, it's palatine and tent man, so you've got that German, just in the very back corner. You're uh, then around the front corner, it's that very slightly lighter grass, and then you get a little bit of citrus. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Pretty good. It's got a lovely tang. Yeah. I'll, I'll drink a couple of pints of that. Oh, yeah. God, that'd be. I don't, I don't, I, it's very rarely I'll drink pints, of course, these days. So. Yeah, I'm always fired. If, so. if, that, if, that, if, that if that was available, then I'll, and there's not much else, I'd be like, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, you know, from yeah. staying around, it depends on what you're with and stuff. But I'd, I could certainly drink a pint if I was on my own somewhere. But I say with food, a barbecue on a hot day, wow, yeah, you, you could. Uh, oh yeah, it doesn't matter what you're going to eat; it's going to just work well with food. Complement it perfectly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's a bit heavier in the body. It is drinkable, but I think it's a bit heavier in the body than I remember it. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's got for the AVV. For the AVV. <laughs> it's got present, sorry. Yeah, I can hear it. Uh, yeah, 5.1. That's quite, it's quite a body on it for, for that ABV. You'd, if you was blindfolded, you'd, you'd probably think it's a little bit more of maybe a 5.5 .5 or yeah, get towards a 6. On that. Yeah, you know, it's not, the, it's not the alcohol, it's just the actual, like I say, the malts and everything else that are going on in there. But to me, yeah, to me, it comes across as a, like a wee bit oily. Yeah. It's, it's got an oil. No, it's definitely. The carbonation, I think, is quite soft. Yeah. But that gives you some of that help. Sort of spicy, that, that little grainy spicy thing in the floral. Yeah. I'm not if it. I'm not sure if it's the power of suggestion, but I can. I know exactly what you're talking about. This yeah. like slight, it's like olive oil aftermath. Yeah. Well, it's not like or anything like that, but it's just very mm -hmm. subtle and it leaves a. Yeah. yeah, it's it's amazing how a beer that's regarded as such a simple <laughs> style of beer can have all these like little. If you really look for stuff, 
you can find some intriguing characteristics to even sort of the simplest yeah. of beers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. oh, right, last, last chug. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing. They do, I mean, they do these. They find something on its own. It's always the vice spirits that you're going to come across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, Augustina, Augustina Ellis obviously is good. I think Delvinburg are the pills as well. I've never tried that. Yeah, they do. They do a really good pills on it, actually. And it's actually, it's, I think it's mainly brewed at Bischofsdorf here in Regensburg. Okay. But I think, I think they still have um, brewing equipment at the actual Abbey itself. But mm -hmm. I think for beers that are mainly to be distributed, maybe just in Bavaria in general, they use uh, the Bischofsdorf premises. So, you know, I'm, I'm literally a stone's throw away from something like the Assambok. It's like, yeah, thank you. The what book? The Mr. Asambok. All right. Awesome. Yes, all right. <laughs> that would be a kind of best kind of book. Yeah, sounds like sounds like a brown ale. <laughs> <laughs> Unfiltered. That would be a nice year to do. Yes, it would be the the Asambok or the Celebrate. That would be quite. Oh yeah, got that two good bits. Oh yeah, yeah. I say good, they're fucking awesome. But yeah, Valtzberger does a really good pills now. Um, I'm not sure if Paulana. I'm sure Paulana would do a pills though, but I, yeah, they do have a pills. Yeah. I don't think I've really seen it, to be honest. Yeah, I think they do. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, you'd, you'd think they would. I think it's my. I don't know if they've got pills. They definitely have a pills. Yeah, they've got the Munichellas, and I think they've got the Munichellas light version. Yeah, I that's a good point, actually. Yeah. Which is, it's again, that's another beautiful Ellis bear, I'd say. But um, I've got to say, I've never had anything else from this brewery. I've not, no, not at all. Beers of Europe have got quite a large selection of Belgian beers. Uh, sorry, James, I couldn't hear you. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. I think I'm uh, um, Do a lot of, quite a wide range of German beers. Never really looked into before. Yeah, yeah that, for, when, when I've seen like Harry do his reviews, he's got like this really obscure even though it's not too obscure here in Germany, like these Hellas beers, I'm like, that that was available for beers of Europe. It's insane to me. You could get some really good beers from places like yeah. beers of Europe. Yeah, I've never really looked to be honest, because yeah. you know, going more, going, I mean, I've been leaning towards the craft kind of scene the last. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying to get back into the like the English real ales over the weekends for reviews, and then do. So I try and balance it a little bit, but, um, but yeah, just, I've never really got properly looked into the German ones. Although I've had a fair few in the last mm -hmm. probably six months or so. But yeah, yeah, I could see myself being in, in the October fest. I, I've not really touched on those yet, so so I'm looking at doing something like that. Oh, yeah, end yeah. of the summer. Pretty cool. <laughs> A lot yeah. of Belgian beers to have a look at as well. That's the thing. Yeah, they're quite accessible to me, sort of down this way. So, I need to, I've got two of them. I'm trying to get like one for me to the original seven because I'm trying to do. I want to form a Belgian yeah. jacket, mm -hmm. yeah. like all the styles as well. So I've got a specific list that I want to get, and a couple of them like, like yeah. Achel like, Brown and. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it? Um, yeah, they're all yeah. on beers. Yeah. Uh, apart, yeah, apart from the uh, obviously the Westie, yeah. you've got that. So. I've got, <laughs> yeah, I've got the Westie eight and blonde. Yeah, but that, that's cool. that's uh, another thing for me as well to get into is the Belgian stuff because I don't know they, they've got a really distinct character to them which i 
I don't find offensive, but they're not like beers that I can. I can't be a really big Belgian beer fan because there are just flavours that you find throughout a lot of the. Even it doesn't matter if it's a, a triple, a double, or a quad. There's always this like one distinct characteristic which I, I always associate with the yeast. Yeah, that's, that they use. They're, they're definitely uh, fridge beers for a while and then delve into them off yeah. a few weeks or so just to calm them down. Yeah. They, they, are, they are quite carbonated with the, that, that kind of classic yeast they mm -hmm. use. It was like, um, uh, I'm going to close this off in a little bit, but go off a little bit of tangent. But um, the, I tried the, yeah. um, is it Dol Golden Drac? Or Golden Drac? I can't remember if it's Golden. Gold, 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 golden Drac. Yeah, yeah, I, I tried. I, I done that. I tried. I, 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 I had a big. Bought ah, okay. 600 mil on my own, yeah. 650. You're brave. I, I had a buzz on after that. Oh, yeah. Because I, I tried the... I was on holiday. I tried the um, the 9,000, which was for some reason cheaper than the, the regular uh, Golden Drac. And uh, I had that. And that was the... It was, it was amazing how easy drinking and laid back a beer at that ABV with all of those flavours could be. And I was like, when I was putting it in untapped, I saw that um, Chad Albino Rhino had reviewed it as well. And he summed it up perfectly. He was like, this is the most beautiful, boring beer that I've ever had, or something along those lines. And I was like, God, that beer would be so great after a few years. Just yeah. let it sit, do its thing. In the fridge, though, for sure. Yeah. Just, yeah. Calm. just go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you are. So no, but this so, this, beer, this beer was really nice. Yeah. Glad I've got any, one I've got. any final thoughts or um, something along those lines about the beer? Any flavours coming through now, or any sensations just, or anything just, like that? Got, got a bit, just I got it about halfway through. Yes, I've still got that kind of oily hop character, spicy. On the palate, that, that kind of white pepper just it's, it's subsiding now on the palate, but it's still, I still know I've had that beer kind of thing. Mm -hmm. if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. See, this, this beer, it shows you why the Rhinox can be for the style, it's really good, which is yeah. another thing which is really bizarre. The uh, do you want to go into the ratings? Uh, if if you if there's any final thoughts or no, just the, the uh, just the, um, uh, the, rape, the rape beer. Uh, well, I'll go through that, but um, if you guys want to give me your ratings, um, whether it be letters or out of five, out of ten, or decimals, um, just... It's very good. Very good. So that's uh, the C, yeah. nine out of ten, then. Yeah, <laughs> within, the, I would within, within the build style, I I'd buy again. It's a solid nine, I think. Yeah. The only reason I wouldn't give it ten is obviously there's so many mm -hmm. other German pills that are there, yeah. so it's maybe unfair that this one yeah. past pills, but within the pills for me, you know, it's a solid nine, nine out of ten. Um, overall, maybe I think it, it's a good, it's maybe a good thing. I would never because you can tell yeah. Yeah. it's a good beer. Again, it's, it's maybe just my thing. Like if I was, maybe I just prefer, I, I, I probably just not say that I go to that often. Mm -hmm. It's not the most yeah. beautiful style. Um, but yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty much spot on with that. Uh, mm -hmm. summary it's a fantastic example of the style um i'm going to give it a, a nine out of ten for the style mm -hmm. and for my own personal taste tastes on the beer itself probably around the eight mark because there are some pills that i think just edge it a little bit that have a little bit more of a, a vibrancy to them and a little bit more of a zesty character which i do like with the specifically the german style pilsners Mm -hmm. But it's definitely one that you you'd never turn down 
I, 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 I don't care who you are, I don't care what your preference is, but you can't, with a straight face, say that this is a bad, just flat out bad beer. It might not be your thing, but it's such uh, a high quality. Style. Yeah. Styles. Yeah, it's just a absolutely just a, just a great little beer. So, quickly go through the the ratings then. So, rate beer gives this forty one overall, but eighty one for style. I, I hate the rate beer system. I just it's bizarre. I hate that system. I I stand by this, but rate beer. The American dominance that exists within rape beer really fucks up when it comes to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, it, it's, the, 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 the German beers are shit in rape beer. Just ignore them. Yeah, yeah. So, the, the best uh, pills that are going to rape beer, surprise, surprise, is an American one. And that is the Heater Allen pills from the Heater Allen Brewing Company, which has got 99 <laughs> overall. And 100 for style. But the 100 for style, I call bullshit on. I'm sure you'll get some really good examples of German style pills that brewed in America, but oh, yeah, I, I don't think you can really get to that. But Germany is literally hundreds of years of brewing these sorts of beers. Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. That style thing. The thing I would always say. I mean, fair enough. If it's if it makes a better, we will all it. But you cannot. I think there's a legitimacy issue there with great beer. How how can a foreign brewed example, unless it's brewed by say a German brewmaster, how can it be better within the style than than the original? Exactly. Yeah. It's like the uh, Belgian beers as well. It's, yeah. I mean, sure, yeah, surely you've got to say that, like, the best rated beer is German and Hellas, the surely the best rated German Hellas or whatever, has to be the one that is the benchmark for the style. Yeah. And, uh, there you go. Oh, sorry, Craig. Yeah. No, no, sorry. Uh, I cut you off then. No, no, you're um, cool. But the best German brewed Pilsner is from Gienstader Breu, and that got 94 for style, and uh, 94 overall and 100 for style. So I don't know, but, the, but it's that point you've just said, like surely the German brewed beer or the German brewed beer should be the benchmark for that. But yeah, but so it's it's good to actually see that in the list there is actually German brewed pilsens. I hear you correctly. Did you see Gainstaller? Uh, yeah. I think I might have tried that actually. That's the one that has like a goose head on it. Ah, okay. That's brewed. It's brewed somewhere in the Bamberg area. Ah, okay. I'll keep a lookout for that one then. I mean, did you? They're a really good, they're a very good brewery. I mean, I, I tasted that one. We got it through the small partiers up here, and I've never heard of the brewery, so it's called German beer. Yeah. Like, they're a really, they're one of, I think they're one of these. Uh, I'm surprised you've not covered that brewery, actually, because these, they, they're one of the, they're very new. I remember them only being like a couple of years old. So I think oh, okay. German breweries. It's not an old brewery. Yeah. It could have been one of those things where I've maybe walked past. Uh, like a limited room that's been available here or something like that. It is amazing how I'll see a bit, I mean I can't remember what beer it was, I thought it was a while ago and I'd seen it in Beretta for like week after week after week after week. The stock had never depleted and then the time where I'm like I'm finally going to get this beer, the whole shelf had gone. So that happens a lot in the like supermarkets as well. Like you'll see, oh, I've always wanted to try like um, the, there's some bottles of the um, the Reinhardt celebration beer that Weinstefan did. Was it the Keller beer, like the yeah, yeah, the Femme yeah, yeah. And I've I've seen that, and I'm like, Peter, you should get on that. 
pretty much straight away because that could just go and you probably won't see that stock replenished. But yeah, it's just uh, amazing. So anyway, Beer Advocate is quite a bit more favourable to this beer. And it gets 90 out of 100 overall. And the bros gave it 90 as well, which I think is... No, I think that pretty much falls in line with what we have to say. And then the best beer, or the best German pills that come to Beer Advocate, again, America, and that's Mary from Hill Farmstead Brewery, which got 92 out of 100. But the third best German brewed pilsner is actually this one. So Beer Advocate is actually making a little bit more sense to me personally, anyway. And then making an effort. Yeah. More about that is the one thing you might get in Germany. That you know, there'll be a few like dark horses with the brow houses and stuff. There will be. Yeah. That'll be one of the things. What did you have to take them with a pinch of salt simply for that reason? Oh yeah. But in terms of commercial availability. Yeah, definitely. And finally, for Untapped, this got 3.49 out of 5 from 22,507 views. And the beer was added on the 21st of September, uh, no, 21st of August 2010, which again, it's slightly below what we, but it's still, it's still in that ballpark. It's about seven, isn't it? Works out just about. Yeah. And the best all round German style Pilsner, according to the ratings on Untapped, is again an American one from the Suarez family brewery in Livingston, New York, called the Palatine Pils, which got 4.2 out of 5 from only 1,045 reviews. But that being said, it was only added on the 28th of the 8th. 2016 so a very young beer and the best german brewed german style pilsner is the don ramona brewed by the munich brew mafia which is 3.82 out of 5 out of only 632 ratings and was added on the 3rd of the 10th 2016 or the 10th of the 3rd 2016 going off the american dating system so mm -hmm. although i don't agree i never really agree with websites like rapier and beer advocate untapped i'm a little bit more accepting of because people actually write reviews yeah. of the beers properly and actually show they pictures get more, they, get more, they get more check-ins generally yeah. so that the actual overall figure is going to be lower yeah but but when, it, when the, 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 like, yeah. the tens of thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands it's all leveled out yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot more fair and balanced because i think i think it was rod jay was pointing out that the bros actually haven't reviewed a beer for or rates the beer for like a few years now so yeah. yeah you can't use that as an argument to say whether a beer is good or bad because it's just not a relevant number anymore I mean, no. when I when I read out the scores, it's just out of curiosity's sake, to be honest. I, I very rarely take uh, the scoring system from and James is in bed, always good sign. Yeah. Uh, I very rarely <laughs> take their scores serious, but I like to mention them every now and then yeah. uh, because some people do, you know, base their decisions on that. So whatever but um yeah all in all a very solid tasty drinkable beer perfect well not perfect example of the style but a very good example of the style good one yeah and it's one that i'll definitely when i see it pick up a couple of bottles every now and then just for sort of dependable even though i'm surrounded by you know so many pilsners but um yeah so I'm going to cut this off here, but I will be starting a new chat so people can come in 
uh, and you know we got invaded by Paul and then he got scared and ran away but um, sure. so I'm going to cut this off here thank you to I'm being anyone polite. he speaks I was going to say the famous line but I'm not sure. it's not, 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 not now not not on the, the not on the legitimate video. So um, yeah, thank you to everyone who's watched this. Um, I apologise for not keeping up with the comments, but uh, feel free to stick around. Um, it'll probably be about five ten minutes before we start again. Uh, big thank you to both Craig and James, and of course James for coming up with the idea to do the Roadhouse Pills there. Thank you for for the posting because I'm useless with Google. Not a problem. I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to take the burden. Now I enjoy doing these. I really enjoy doing these live views. So uh, for the people who are watching now, all three people or two now, uh, a big thank you for sticking around with us. And to the people who are watching this when it's uploaded, if you've tried this beer, give us give us all your thoughts, opinions, give us suggestions of some beers that we should look at in the future. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. And I shall hopefully, with a, an empty glass, see you all later. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thanks.